Okay, hi there, and welcome to a macroeconomics video, which is going to look at the difference between an internal and an external devaluation of a currency. Here's the question, explain the difference between internal devaluation and external devaluation. Quite important, quite a few countries are using the exchange rate now as a key part of their macroeconomic policy. First of all, internal devaluation. Now this happens when a country tries to improve, perhaps regain their price and cost competitiveness, and the mechanism is, is through lowering their own wage costs and increasing their productivity to reduce unit wage costs and not reducing the external value of their exchange rate. So they try to become more competitive internally rather than relying on the exchange rate. Good examples to quote in exams include Latvia and, and other Baltic states after the uh, the boom years when they first joined the EU. Greece would be a good country to, to mention, particularly the depression which followed the financial crisis. Ecuador is being invited by the IMF at the moment to impose some austerity to achieve an internal devaluation. What this means is that a country needs several years of low relative inflation, in other words, their inflation rate needs to be lower than that of competitor countries. Uh, so price is not rising as fast, in some cases price is falling, of course, in the case of Greece, internal devaluation involved a period of, of price deflation, a negative rate of inflation. How do you get there? Well, typically you need some pretty severe deflationary policies if you go down this pathway. Fiscal austerity, uh, sometimes imposed by outside bodies, that involves higher taxes, cuts in government spending and borrowing, or perhaps the central bank decides to increase the real interest rate on loans, so higher uh, interest rates, fiscal austerity, both of which impose deflationary pressure on both prices and also output. So internal devaluation is more likely to happen with a country that has a fixed exchange rate. In other words, it can't necessarily alter the exchange rate. Ecuador has a fixed rate against the dollar, doesn't necessarily want to get rid of that fixed rate, therefore it needs to devalue internally. Greece is inside the single currency zone, the eurozone. Uh, it can't devalue against other European countries because they share the same currency. Here's the supporting analysis for internal devaluation. Uh, you could, uh, could show an inward shift of the aggregate demand curve, causing the general price level to fall and real output to fall, contract from Y1 to Y2. Typically, uh, fiscal austerity, higher interest rates, leads to an inward shift of AD and quite a big fall in real national output. So that is internal devaluation. And here's the example, Ecuador, um, a dollarized economy, so linked to the dollar. This is from the IMF, raising Ecuador's competitiveness, raising productivity will require a concerted effort. Since Ecuador uses the US dollar as its currency, it is not able to use exchange rates as a tool to make its exports more competitive. Therefore, the country will have to rely on policies that allow for internal devaluation. Sometimes that can happen from supply side reforms. Um, but one of the criticisms of internal devaluation is that it's a much slower way of improving competitiveness than the old-fashioned external devaluation. There are also big questions about whether it works. And here's Greece. This, this chart shows the general price level in Greece. Can you see from 2013 onwards, there was a period of years there. The economy was in depression where the general price level was falling. There was price deflation in Greece, part of their internal devaluation. External devaluation uh, happens with a country operating a fixed or semi-fixed exchange rate system. And it's when they deliberately opt to reduce or cut the external value of their currency against a range of other currencies. That means that their currency can buy less of a foreign currency. What it does mean is that exports from this country then become more price competitive in overseas currencies and overseas markets. It also makes imports relatively more expensive. So some of the aims of devaluation, external devaluation, include um, stimulating exports, include reducing the size of a trade deficit, 
and also to reduce the real value of sovereign debt owed to, to creditors. In theory, in theory, a devaluation of the currency is a quick way of improving competitiveness, certainly quicker than internal devaluation, but of course it also carries some downsides as well. Good examples, uh, Egypt devalued by 16% 16 against the US dollar in 2016, Ghana devalued by 17% against the US dollar in 2019, and some evidence that Pakistan has been devaluing their rupee against the dollar, 5% uh, fall there in November 2018. So that's external devaluation. What are the risks associated with each? There are obviously potential advantages, but also some downsides as part of the evaluation. If you think about internal devaluation, the big risk is there's a big loss of output and also many more jobs lost because demand and incomes and prices are falling. So people's nominal wages are falling, so their living standards are declining. So consumption per capita tends to go down and a fall in AD, which we showed on the diagram, leads to a contraction in demand for labour. If you go too far, if you get price deflation, of course, there are significant risks from deflation. You should be familiar with that, including that the real uh, value of debt goes up and so too there's a real interest rate on existing loans. The big danger, I think, as Greece has found, with an internal devaluation, which lasts several years, is that they suffer a permanent loss of output, a permanent loss of productive capacity that is known by economists as hysteresis. But there are also downsides to an external devaluation of the currency. One is that inflation will go up, if you think about it, inward shift of aggregate supply caused by higher prices of imports. Um, higher inflation reduces people's real incomes, so per capita incomes in real terms will go down certainly initially from a devaluation. You should also know if you understand the J-curve theory that there's no guarantee that the devaluation of the currency will improve your trade balance. And also if you cut your currency um, pretty much without warning, creditors, people who've lent you money from overseas countries, they will, they will suffer and therefore they may well demand higher interest rates on any existing or sorry, any new debt issued by governments and by businesses. The uncertainty surrounding devaluation, if you go back to that Pakistan chart in a Pakistan devaluing perhaps several times over a number of years, that uncertainty and volatility of currencies can also damage trade and it can also make a country less attractive to inward investment. So downsides for both internal devaluation and also external devaluation.